Is it recording? Yeah, it is. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is a slightly different angle of my bedroom. This is my wardrobe. And I keep some clothes in here, <laughs> as well as some coats, which I suppose are also clothes. But this video is going to be my thrifted coat collection. And I wanted to give a disclaimer at the beginning of the video with an acknowledgement that I know I have a lot of coats. Like, you don't need to tell me I have a lot of them because I'm, I'm well aware. I've got way over the national average of coats. Actually, I don't know what the national average is, so that could be a complete lie. Only two of my many coats, two or three maybe, a first hand. I just wanted to show you that you can get some really, really cool coats second hand, if I do say so myself. I know I have a lot of them, but it is what it is, and I'm doing my bit for charity by picking up coats from charity shops. I can definitely do this for other kind of pieces in my wardrobe as well, because this is how this video came about. I was, I was clearing out my stuff the other day, and I did put it on Instagram, like the mess. I've always wanted to do a capture wardrobe, but I just have so many precious clothes that I love so much, secondhand clothes, the vast majority of my wardrobe is secondhand, but yeah, I was sorting everything out and I just thought, you know what, I've got so many gems in here that I don't know if you guys have seen and I thought maybe it'd be interesting to show you and I wanted to start with coats because coats are a kind of thing that every single year I hear people say like, this year's winter coat or they've bought a new coat for the autumn winter season and it's, it's kind of a... Even though they last a long, long time, I find coats last the longest out of all items of clothing, there is this kind of idea that as we go into a new season, you need to get a new coat. And yeah, I thought I would show you that if you want to do that, absolutely fine, but maybe check out the charity shops or vintage stores before you go and buy one first hand. I also spent a long time colour coding my wardrobe the other night. It's a sight to behold, but let's start on this side. The first coat we come to is this one. And this is actually a jacket. I suppose I'm gonna, this is gonna be jackets and coats, but this was actually a hand-me-down. This was from my nonna, my Italian grandma, and she bought this from a boutique, like, I don't know where, like, uh, maybe in Uxbridge, or maybe, was it in Italy or was it in England? I feel like maybe it was in England and somewhere quite posh, so maybe not Uxbridge. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's a blazer, should I put it on? I feel like it's not gonna look good with this shirt, but this is so well made and fancy, it's probably the fi fa fanciest? fanciest item of clothing I've got. It's got these gold detail buttons. It kind of makes me look like an air hostess, but I'm not mad about that. And I feel like it's long enough on me that I could wear this as a dress, but it might be a little bit risque, so. Yeah, that's coat number one. It was technically free because it was a hand-me-down. Coat number two happens to also be a hand-me-down from my other grandma. Now, okay, I haven't actually, basically, this is quite garish as you can see but it is reversible so it's got black velvet on the inside and I've worn it with the black velvet on the outside and then I turn up the cuffs and then you can see this I'll show you so on like this and then the cuffs just give a kind of a hint of the bright pink and it, the um, material on the inside is kind of this silk it does look quite Beatles with the you know the sergeant pepper kind of vibe with the clasps here I don't know what you call these bubbles <laughs> Bobbles. Not sure, but I love this coat. I never actually saw my nan wear this, I, I have to admit. But nobody else wanted it. <laughs> I'm not surprised, because like I say, it is quite in your face. But I feel like this could be really cool. Yeah, I've only had it a few a few months. It's lovely though. And again, free of charge. <laughs> That's a life hack. That's my top tip. The cheapest shopping is hand-me-downs. I'll just try it on with the pink on the outside so you can see. Because it's quite boxy as well, I'd, I find it hard to find a way that would make it flattering with the pink on the outside, but yeah, I'm open to suggestions. And then, okay, this is again, not really a coat, more of a jacket, but I picked this up in Sue Ryder in Nottingham, which if you live in Nottingham and you like vintage clothes, highly recommend Sue Ryder. And yeah, this is really creased because it was, I had to take it, bring it back from uni and it was just in a bin bag as I was <laughs> taking it back. So yeah, I do need to give this an iron or press it or whatever you do with a blazer. I got this from the sale rail at the back for three pounds. Three pounds or five pounds? It was pretty inexpensive. I tried this on with a frilly blouse and I think some jeans and I felt like Harry Styles and yeah. I actually left it on, I left it in the store um, and I thought oh, I'll come back if I really want it and then the next day I still really really wanted it so I came back, made the purchase. But yes, that's what it looks like from the back, that's what it looks like from the front. Feel kind of Miami Vice in this. You know. Next, I've got a couple of denim jackets. This one's quite fitted, and this was the first one I got from a jumble sale. And clothes at a jumble sale are usually 10p, 30p. They're really inexpensive. I've had this for so long, and I've definitely, definitely got my money's worth. I love denim. I love double denim and all different shades of denim. But did anyone watch the um, Stacey Dooley documentary, Fashion's Dirty Secrets? And the amount of 
was it cotton or was it denim? I can't remember what she did, but the amount of water it takes to make a pair of jeans is insane. So yes, that's why I definitely recommend buying denim secondhand. And like, there's always a plethora of denim at vintage stores and charity shops. You're always gonna be able to find jeans and a denim jacket. Like, it's just a very, very common thing to find secondhand. I think some things are harder to find secondhand. Some things are actually pretty easy, so yeah. This one I got from, oh, I've mentioned this in a favourites video. Let me wrap my head. It's definitely in Nottingham, definitely in Beeston in Nottingham. I think it was a Salvation Army charity shop there and it was inexpensive. And this one's a lot bigger. It's a bit more of a sort of boxy shape, but it's got pockets on the inside. It's got pockets on the outside. What's this? It's a little to-do list. It says, number one, soak nuts. Number two, put quinoa and rice on. Number three, start cooking curry. Girls, I'm a nightmare with my to-do list. I'll make a to-do list for anything and then I won't get any of it done. That's just my, my thing. I'll just turn my lamp on because the lighting's getting a bit weird. But uh, the next coat is was originally from Marks and Spencer and I picked it up for one pound from a charity shop. This is a bit of a mum coat. I don't know if I love it, but it's really, really warm. And I think with just with jeans and a cool top, it looks fine. But with this, it's going to look a bit a bit mum on a school trip, if you know what I mean. I, yeah, no offence to any mums who've been on school trips. You're doing a great job. But yeah, maybe not my vibe. But then also I actually, I do quite like it. It's quite blazery, but it is a coat. No, it's not, it's like a jacket, but it's really, really warm. It's m &S, so it's really good quality. It's got these buttons. It's very simple, but for one pound, you can't really argue. And I have worn it a lot, especially in summer, because it's, it's really light to carry. If you have a kind of cooler day in summer, it's really light to carry, but it's really, really warm. So that's that one. This, I don't know if it counts as a coat, so I'm not going to mention it, but this is my vintage kimono that I got off Depop. It was quite expensive. This was about, it's got some straw on it. I only really wear this for festivals because it's very kind of festival-y, isn't it? But yeah, I got this for like £65 off of Depop from Rum and Coke, which used to be one of my favourite Depop accounts. I don't really like the stuff she sells anymore just because it's so expensive. God, this is covered in straw or grass I've been rolling in the hay but yeah I still love the things she posts but just not the prices next up a more recent purchase this bright yellow beauty is one that I got in summer I got it from a jumble sale and it also came with a skirt the skirt I haven't worn too much because it needs altering a tiny bit I think to make it a bit shorter because it's very very long but yeah they were a co-ord and I love this coat I think I think it was a pound. It's by the brand Winsmore, which you'll be able to see on that little tag there. And yeah, it's it, oh, it's just such a cool piece. Feels really, really good quality. It does not go with this shirt, but yeah, it's it's nice. I like it a lot. This is what it looks like from the back. This is what it looks like from the front. It's got pockets and it's nice and lightweight. Again, more of a jacket than a coat, but I love that a lot. Next, the start of a controversial end of this video. This is a secondhand leather jacket. And I bought this a while ago. Do I feel weird wearing this sometimes? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. And I do buy secondhand leather because I, I think that secondhand shopping is that I personally think it's the most environmentally friendly way to shop. So, it's, it, you know what? The lines are getting really blurred. When I first started, when I first went vegan, I was like, yeah, I'm going to buy secondhand leather. That's fine. Secondhand leather shoes, like they last longer. Well, that's what I thought. They last longer than whatever, like, you know synthetic materials they let your feet breathe in the hot summer months and I do own secondhand leather boots this sometimes when I'm wearing it I do feel a bit weird especially when it's warm and I'm wearing this and I think why am I so warm just with this jacket on because it's quite you know it's not really really thick and then I realize ah it's, it's a skin this is animal skin so yeah do I find this a bit strange now yes I do but I do still wear it you know I spent good money on it so this is what it looks like on from the back, from the front, it's very 70s style. It does gross me out a bit, but it's still, it's a nice piece and I'm, I'm gonna continue wearing it. But maybe I won't buy, no, I don't know. I'm not gonna commit to anything. It's interesting how your mind changes, like psychologically when you go vegan, how you start like analyzing parts of your lifestyle that maybe aren't directly linked to veganism or directly linked to cutting out dairy and meat from your diet. I don't know, just some food for thought. Next up is another potentially controversial piece this is a secondhand faux fur jacket i'm gonna predict the comments people will say how do you know it's faux fur because i know there was that big 
um, issue with um, faux fur being sold on the high street that was actually real fur and I understand what you're saying but this was second hand and it's, uh, it feels like fake fur. The issue was that they mix in real fur with faux fur so you'll look at it and you'll think yeah that's definitely faux fur because you can see that the ends of the hair are cut off like blocks. Sometimes the lines are blurred again but this is second hand so I didn't, I didn't buy it first hand anyway. Not that I would buy second hand fur, you know what I mean. <laughs> I don't really know why I feel like I have to explain myself all the time. Just get on with it. I think I got this in Oxford in a secondhand store, a vintage store. It wasn't cheap, I think it was about £30 maybe, but I love this. I've had this for years. This is a classic Becky piece. I just think, you know what I love about it? I love that it is cropped. It's not cropped, but it's a good length on me, I'm quite sure. So yeah, this one's a really good length on me and I love the ribbed detail on the arms. Very nice. Next is actually a coat I got first hand. I told you I had a lot of coats. Um, but this one I got from Topshop. Got it maybe 2011, 2010, 2012, around that time. So quite a while ago now. I know that doesn't sound like it was that long ago, but actually it was a good seven years ago, seven, eight years ago. And this did serve me well, don't get me wrong. Can't remember how much it was, but yeah, I still wear this and it's, it's a nice coat, but the um, buttons fell off, which was annoying. The button here fell off and I wasn't rough with it or anything. Not the quality we expect when we're paying, what is it, 65 pounds for a coat at Topshop? Next up is also one that I got first hand from Topshop. Topshop used to be one of my favourite fast fashion stores or just shopping stores on the high street. And this I don't actually wear, I think I might sell it on Depop. I think it would, it's a nice lightweight coat. It is a trench coat, but it's really, really lightweight. I just don't really reach for it at all and wear it even in spring. It's got this little sparkly number that I got from Cow Vintage underneath it. I'm gonna sell this, I think. Well, I'm, basically, I want to set up my Depop account and start selling stuff, but I've been locked out of my Apple account for so long and my phone's running out of memory and just, it won't let me download apps and then when I can download apps I have to put in my password but I'm locked out of my account and then every time I try and recover my account it just doesn't <sighs> technology eh? another faux fur piece that I've had for a long time this my mum got me for my birthday maybe my 17th birthday and I actually altered it I just cut the bottom I didn't really alter it I just cut it willy-nilly and it doesn't look great but um, yeah it's this lovely dark brown faux fur jacket that I don't know where she got it from but it's it's definitely second hand. Winding down now I've got this kind of military style jacket used to wear this a lot it is a navy blue oh I haven't been trying them on sorry <laughs> this is a navy blue quite nice blazer style jacket and it's kind of three quarter length sleeve so I don't wear it all that often because sometimes depending on what you wear it with it can look a bit strange but it's a lovely jacket and I, again I got this from a jumble sale and I've definitely got my money's worth from it and then the last coat in my wardrobe is this one and this one was originally by M&S. I got this again from Sue Ryder, that shop in Nottingham. Quite a long coat, but it doesn't look, it doesn't drown me. Some long coats really do drown me. And it also pins in at the waist here. So even though it's got the kind of shoulder pads and the quite big shoulders, it does still keep its shape and look quite flattering. I love this one a lot. And yeah, I think I'm gonna wear this. This is a good thing about this video. I get to refresh my memory about the pieces I've got in my wardrobe. Okay, so that is that. And then just a couple of honorable mentions to these bad boys over here. So I have like a little over overspill. These are the coats which don't fit in my wardrobe because they're pretty big. This is a hat I got at a market in Peckham the other week. This coat I got from Hopkinson Vintage in Nottingham and I this might be my favorite coat. Possibly. I just I honestly adore it. I wear it so much and again a classic Becky piece. I think I got it in first year at uni. So I remember it was when Serena came to visit. We went to see, oh I can't remember what that band's called. We went to go see a band. But yeah, anyway, that weekend I got this and I think it was about £25, maybe £30. I love the fit of it. I love that it's got this bright red lining. I think it's, it's lovely. It's a really nice teddy bear kind of textured coat and it probably needs a wash because I've never had it Hmm, probably shouldn't say this but I've never washed it I don't think because it's too thick probably to go in the maybe I'll put it in the washing machine next up this coat is more of a recent purchase as well I got this I've shown it as well on my channel I got this from a jumble sale um so it's probably I don't know 20p no no I think this was a pound it was a pound because it was a coat and it's got this it's kind of like a woolen trench coat oh the shoulders look big see depending on what I wear this with it looks a bit weird with the shoulder pads which makes me think I should take the shoulder pads out it just makes me look a bit boxy. What do you guys think? So this is without shoulder pads. This is with shoulder pads. Vote down below. Or I'll do a little poll. Vote in the poll. 
But yeah, I get so many compliments when I wear this. I feel like it's a real crowd pleaser. Second to last is this leopard print coat or cheetah print. I want to say leopard print. Got this from Topshop in first year. So what was that, 2015? This is probably the last first hand coat that I bought. All three of my first hand coats are Topshop. Interesting. Yeah, that used to be my, my place to go to for coats. And I think even if you are going to buy coats, I forgot I put this hat on, but even if you are going to buy coats first hand, just making them last a bit longer and maybe not, you know, maybe getting one every two years as opposed to one every year. And this coat I got from Sue Ryder as well. Can you tell I was a big fan? This is my duvet coat. This is probably my one of my favourites as well. It is so, so warm. It's just a black quilted jacket, but it's kind of felt. I don't, you won't be able to see because the lighting is awful, but it's almost like velvet felt. It's also got this faux fur collar. It's got satin on the inside and pockets on the inside, pockets on the outside. I love going into the pockets of my coats because I've rediscovered things that I forgot about. This is the Dusty Girls Pacific Ocean Shimmer Lip Gloss and the Pacifica nail varnish in the shade pink moon cool so there you have it that is my coat collection for you the vast majority of which were secondhand thrifted and i'm really proud of my coat collection don't get me wrong it's taken me about three or four years of curating my closet of coats but i could just yeah i could have a closet full of coats let's face it i've got enough of them i didn't really count but i'll put the total on the screen now um if you've been following along closely you may already know the amount so yeah price for you if you have been counting then <laughs> pat on the back but yes i really hope you enjoyed this video if you'd be interested in seeing my blouse collection or my bag collection my bags are on top of my wardrobe here or anything you know my cd collection i've got a lot of stuff that I've picked up secondhand. CDs are a good thing to get secondhand as well. You can get them so, so cheap. I don't know if anybody else buys CDs anymore. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're doing lots of lovely secondhand shopping in preparation for Christmas. Remember, if you want to see my sustainable Christmas gift guide um, from last year, then I will link that. It wasn't really a gift guide. It was more just kind of ways to be more sustainable around Christmas time. Then check that out. I might do another one for this year. If you'd be interested in that, I might might do that. Um, but I'll definitely do a vegan gift guide. So if you're interested in any of those things, then make sure you subscribe to see some more from me. Other than that, hope you're doing well. Hope you're having a lovely day. And hopefully I'll catch you in another video. Bye.